This week, we're sitting down with Matt Denton to talk all about the creatures and droids he helped bring to life. Plus, we're showing you one of the coolest jobs at Lucasfilm you might not know about. Roll that intro, Frank. This is the Star Wars Show. From the Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco, here's your hosts, Andy and Anthony. Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Show, a Star Wars show that's had so much going on this month that it completely forgot to celebrate its third anniversary. Oh wow, really? Yeah, here, let's fix that. Yeah, anniversary marked. Well, hopefully the rest of the show is filled with more excitement and revelry just like this. Only one way to find out, by going to the news, right now. Star Wars Galaxy, don't worry, it's still a party. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge may be a few days away from opening to the public at Disneyland Resort in Anaheim this Friday, but if you're clamoring for a first look, you only have to wait a few more hours. That's because tonight, the Disney Parks blog will be live streaming the historic dedication moment. The stream begins at 8.20 p.m. Pacific, 11.20 Eastern, and promises to be full of Star Wars surprises. The land itself opens on Friday and requires a reservation to enter during the first few weeks. For more information on both the live stream and the free reservation system required to enter Galaxy's Edge, check out the Disney Parks blog at this link. Last week marked the 20th anniversary of The Phantom Menace being released in theaters, and StarWars.com celebrated with an exhaustive oral history of the making of the film. The article includes insights from creators like Doug Chang, John Knoll, Ben Burtt, Ahmed Best, George Lucas, and more. Plus, it's full of early concept designs, behind-the-scenes imagery, and lots and lots of Q-tips. The entire article is available to read right now on StarWars.com SWS. Finally this week, the droids, creatures, and aliens of Star Wars have always been a favorite of mine. That's why I was super excited to get a chance to sit down with one of the people responsible for bringing them to life. Literally, because he built the animatronics. Watch. My friend Matt Detton is here, and he's a wizard. You have <laughs> made some amazing Star Wars magic over the years. I mean, most notably BB-8, mm -hmm. but you've also been in charge of a lot of the animatronics and creature shop. How'd you get involved with Star Wars? I actually was lucky because um, Josh Lee, who also was one of BB-8's creators, Josh phoned up and said, I've just started on this film, I can't tell you what it is, but I'm designing a robot, and would you be interested in coming in and seeing if it's even possible to make it work? And I went in and he showed me this ball droid design, and this was for the trike. He was trying to figure out if we could put stabilizer wheels on the back and they could all steer together and stuff. And so I went in and started on a simulation. So you started building BB-8 and there were seven that were used for the films with their different motions and features, but then when you had to build the live event droid, did you have any idea how people were going to respond to him at Celebration Anaheim? Or were you surprised? You know, that one bit of footage came out, didn't it, with rolling along in the desert? And I had to ask the head of ILM in the UK, is that ours or have you done that? And he went, no, no, it's yours. It's really? We've, we've doctored the, the head was sort of bouncing about a bit and it was really fast and it was the puppet being pushed as fast as possible. So coming out live, I think we knew it was going to go down well. Everyone we showed it to was like, how does that work? You know, it's like a magic trick. What do you think it is about BB-8 that people immediately just connected to? There's something special about that design. When we were looking at characterizing BB-8, I think we always saw it as like a little puppy. You can get so much character out of that head. Having the ball in the head and you just sort of mm. dip it to one side or you can drop it down and look at it and you, know, you do so much with it. So straight away that character came out. People always want to talk about BB-8, but some of my favorite work that you've done is on the creatures because they're just so cool. They're so <laughs> cool. It's like, they're my favorite part. I love aliens. When you switch gears and you're working on a robot and then working on something that's supposed to be alive, tell me about how that changes your process and your outlook. Nearly every alien head that you've seen over the last five years has been across my desk at some point and I've done something on it. The difference between that and a droid is trying to hide the robot within. So a lot of my time is spent um, over the years writing software and developing techniques to make things look more organic. Little things like the way they blink and when they blink I can put automated stuff into them now mm -hmm. and um, Six Eyes was one of the best examples of that because it had this head tracking unit on it and Martin Rezard who sculpted uh, Six Eyes, that design, uh, and Gustav Huygen who did the animatronic for it. Gustav put like 58 motors in the head or something to get all the eyes moving together and so then I really had this thing to play with you know and it was just a joy there are techniques that we used on six eyes that i would like to make simpler because to set that system up it took me like days to get that working nicely so it's just about making things more bulletproof and user friendly so your work is incredibly inspiring to me and i'm sure it is to a lot of star wars fans i'm sure there's a lot of kids watching this going like mm. i want to make animatronics i want to build mm. robots i want to make creatures what's the kind of advice that you would give them in following that path Build something that really interests you. I built things all the time as a kid and took things apart. I love taking things apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for coming by. 
Thank you. Watching the Star Wars show. Have you ever messed around in Vader Immortal and just put party lights? I think Vader probably throws a pretty wicked party, honestly. What kind of wig would he wear? Definitely a rainbow fro. <laughs> My name is Ronman Ng. I'm a lighting technical director at ILM X Lab. <laughs> As a lighting TD, my job is akin to lighting a puppet set where you have control over the light sources and how many light sources you have, where you place them, where the shadow falls, what color the lights are, which is kind of what I do in a computer animated set. My background is in computer animation, so the big difference for me is that the tools that I have are real-time tools. One of the things that is great about it is the feedback is instantaneous. I can make a change put on my headset and go into VR and take a look and see how my decisions have worked out. One of the first projects I worked on was Secrets of the Empire and my role on that was to be the lighting TD. It was a one-person job and it was amazing because I basically lit the whole thing and got to learn how it works. Good lighting is important because if it's not good you're not going to feel like you're in a believable world. You're not going to connect as readily with both the story and the characters you're with. I think part of the challenge is to make it look good enough that you can believe that Vader is standing next to you. I think being in VR and working in VR does expand your imagination. I think it makes you aware of what else is possible. ILM X Lab, we do a lot of immersive and experiential design, so it's the cutting edge of both entertainment and technology. For me, it makes me imagine what else I could do with this medium and hopefully can inspire other people. While the two of us are beyond excited to head to Black Spire Outpost when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opens this Friday, our ever loyal viewers are ready to break into Batu like a father busting through a casino full of <laughs> war profiteers. Caribbean is looking forward to grabbing the ragdoll style toys. Kayla of Went is ready to jam out to DJ Rex, predicting every song slaps, while Darth Demi is looking forward to hopefully catching a sunrise against the spires. Chris Niles is looking forward to making an astromech, and the appropriately named Batu Jedi cannot wait to build their first lightsaber and then use the Kyber crystal from it in a holocron to discover lost Jedi lore. That's a real thing you can do. <laughs> but the overwhelming obvious thing that people are looking forward to is seeing the Millennium Falcon in person, stepping inside, and taking control of the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. We're right there with you, and if you ever need a spare pilot, gunner, or engineer, you know who to call. And as always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and remember, if you see our editor Frank out in real life or on the internet, congratulate him on getting engaged over the weekend. Congratulations, Frank! Yay, Frank! Thanks for watching, and may the force be with you. Is that, she going to take? Is she going to take now. your name? Is she Bianca Star Wars now? <laughs> Mr. This is Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Slaps. Is that is that cool teen lingo that yeah. I don't know? What's up, fellow teens? Local youth Andrea Gutierrez <laughs> says this song slaps. <laughs>